Younger voters are being targeted big time by the candidates you see this year. But what do these younger voters actually want? With us today, two young professionals. Magdalena Jandro is a financial advisor. And what town are you from? Farmington. Farmington, that's correct. And Matt Munson is from Meriden. He is a construction materials supplier. And also, you may have recognized him from The Bachelorette, and he filled in in Better Connecticut a couple of times mm -hmm. with Kara Sunland. So thanks to both of you for being here today. Thank you. Let's begin with you, Magdalena. What is the biggest problem facing Connecticut, you think? Sure. So from a, a millennial or a young person's perspective, I would say it's absolutely the economy and job creation. So many millennials graduated college and went into the financial recession in 2008. And so many of them have been burned and they're thinking, what if that happens again? The other element is job creation. I think millennials don't only want um, uh, employment, but they want meaningful employment. So when I think of it from my perspective, uh, what kind of companies we're investing in, those are the ones where people want to have jobs, and that would be in technology, biotech, artificial intelligence, and the like. And Matt, you're here for your family and because of your job, but you have a lot of friends who've hit the road and moved out of state. And what are they telling you? Uh, that, you know, we, there's a lot of competition here. We're wedged between uh, Boston and New York City, uh, not to mention various other places that people can go and pay the same taxes and the same expenses to live in those places than they do here. And uh, I think what's difficult about living here is just uh, lack of diversity in terms of things to do, uh, you know, places to go. People, we're, we're, it's very retro in the sense a lot of people want to live in, in vibrant areas like a West Hartford, for example. And if, there, if everywhere was West Hartford, I don't think we'd have the issue. But people are fleeing for uh, areas where they can go downtown, where they can uh, socialize, where th there's culture, museums, uh, places to eat, um, places to have a coffee and, and have conversation. And uh, certain towns around here have it, and others don't. So I think in order to keep people here, we have to create the landscape uh, where people want to stay and, and make it sustainable. And right now, uh, you know, without the, without the companies and the businesses here that we need to keep those people here, it's just, it's not working. And are people that you know saying, oh, we need tolls, we need marijuana, are they, you know, what are they talking about these issues that the candidates are talking about? Sure, so I think the primary issue is definitely the uh, fiscal budget because that is what's going to attract the businesses. We actually have some momentum going. So there's um, an insurance, insure tech incubator in Hartford that's been attracting some companies. You saw SSC, which is a blockchain company, announced they're moving their headquarters to West Hartford. We certainly have some great other companies like UTC and Sikorsky here. So I think that young people are really looking to what jobs are coming and what jobs are we going to make them stay and then to Matt's point I think those vibrant cities is definitely what young people are looking for and a part of that is infrastructure and trains or buses or ways to get to a downtown that is in a car. Matt tolls do you think that would drive some of your friends out of the state if we implemented tolls in the state? You know it's interesting it's kind of split when you talk to people our age I, I yeah. firmly believe um, I think that I'm surrounded by both perceptions people see uh, something like a tolls or, or legalization of marijuana um, as a progressive way to keep up with the Joneses. I mean, other states are doing it and people are leaving here to go to those states. So we, you know, we're in a position where we have to do something and why not try it out? We've done it before, you know, and it's worked in the past. So I don't think that uh, adapting tolls again, uh, many people would be against it for the majority. I know you might have watched clips of the debate or at least some of the debate. Um, did any of the candidates say anything that pinged with young voters, you think? Yeah, I think several of the candidates talked about investing into STEM programs, so science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, there was a company that won a grant to come into Hartford. It's a Dutch-based company, software company. They ended up going to Chicago because they said that Illinois had uh, more investments into STEM programs. So hearing that uh, some of the candidates on both sides are interested in STEM programs, I think really resonates with young people. Matt, do people believe these promises that two candidates will wipe out the income tax? Uh, no, I think this generation is as aware and as quick to call people on their, you know, misleading gestures. Uh, we're a smart generation, we're, and no one's going to fool us. So, you know, uh, I, I don't think that uh, you're fooling anybody if you're a candidate. I think um, people around, or people our age are, are as aware as they've ever been. It's August. I know people are concerned about vacations and other things, but are people excited to vote on Tuesday? Are, are, are your colleagues and peers and friends, are they going to be voting on Tuesday? 
I would say absolutely yes. Um, my peers more than ever are interested in voting. You've seen a lot of young people uh, join politics across the country. And so here in Connecticut, my peers are looking forward to actually making a difference. Matt? Oh, I would agree. I would agree. Um, again, we're this is a smart generation, and we're about change. And we realize that we're sort of, you know, at a point in time where, where things have to progress and we have to move forward. And uh, you know, people have lineage here; their families have been here for a long time. I don't think people are against the idea of sticking around. There just has to be good reason to. The candidates are watching Face the State. They watch it every Sunday. We know, maybe not right at 8:30, but they do DVR it. They watch it sometime during the course of the weekend. What's your message to them? Don't forget about us. We actually are now bigger than the baby boomers, and so we definitely have um, potential to impact this election. What would you like them to do for Connecticut? Uh, I know you touched on some of the points earlier. Is there anything else, like a message for those candidates as they... Uh, I, I just think that to be all ears and to listen to, to, you know, we are the future of Connecticut. You know, if we leave, then what is next for our state? I mean, we, ideally, I think someone like me and, and yourself, we are the minority, people who are sticking around, but we want to have families here and we want to be here for the long term. So I just think that, like you said, don't leave us out. If anything, put us first in terms of who you're listening to and just be open-minded and willing to be progressive and not stay, stay so suck, uh, stuck in our ways. Excuse Magdalena Jandro and Matt Munson, we thank you so much for being on Face the State this Sunday and best of luck voting on Tuesday. Thank you very much. And a reminder to our viewers out there, if you haven't registered, tomorrow is the last day to do it. You must go to your city or town hall. And don't forget to join us on election night. We have the best coverage in Connecticut beginning as soon as the polls close at 8 o'clock. We have a primetime special at 10 o'clock. And if you have any questions about the candidates, you can watch all our past interviews with them on our YouTube channel right now and on the WSB app. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Thanks for watching.